Okay. Well, welcome to welcome to Uruguay. Welcome to to Montevideo. I would like to thank uh, Sergio Martin, all this all this wonderful team from Pasteur Institute, uh, for allowing me to have uh, this possibility to to communicate with you. Um, and also I I know so I'm invited to to try to share with you this world of viruses, you know, particularly um, some principles for you that may may come from another other um so other fields, you know, that that you integrate on this uh, course that that uh, Dr. Pantano and his team will do on physics, molecular and computational. Uh, computational virology. Uh, my name is Juan Cristina. I'm a professor of virology here in, in the School of Sciences. So you you see here, you know, this this wonderful reconstruction. So Sergio and all the people know more than me on that, you know. And that is a coronavirus, particularly South Korea, that you may know all these problems that, that we have worldwide on, on all that, you know, we have this capsid, but but how is this well? You know, how we how we came to to all to all that, you know. So, so next, um, so I will show you, you know. So, what is a virus, you know? Welcome to our world that we that we study, you know. So, viruses infect all all types of cellular life, you know. Last, uh, my college, uh, Gonzalo said, you know, they infect anything that makes ATP, you know. So, how on the here on the on the right, on the, on on the bottom, but this is just arboviruses. Just it's a group of viruses that you you can see, you know that pretty much, um, you know all that all all type of cellular life that that we that we may have uh, are infected by by viruses through the course of of evolution. And on so you see there are many times you had some fancy stuff like bacteriophage that affect bacteria. And they have a, I mean, there is just two different that you will see uh, forms of the, of the viruses and, and the geometry. This is a, a, a icosahedral and it has some that is just uh, the, the nucleic acid. So this is a, a tobacco mustard virus, one of the first virus that that was already already discovered. So there is a huge world, you know. So if you go think in the ocean, you will have um, tons of, of bacteriophage, you know, when you see some uh, lights in the night and then it's a uh, bacteria, then it gets parasite by the bacteriophage. You have 10 to the 30s um, bacteriophages in the world ocean that also, uh, they play a role, you know, in, in, in the equilibrium that you may have uh, in this... Uh, in this world we breathe, you know, uh, uh, millions and millions of particles per day. You know, you remember the SARS-CoV-2 pandemic when you exhale and see millions and millions, you have, uh, there are some studies, you know, whales, uh, you can, uh, you know, 10 to the more than 10, 13, 10 to the 13 uh, particles of caliciviruses, etc. And so, but they have a role, they catalyze the biochemical cycle of the world ecosystem. And uh, so you had to think the relation also, don't think only the virus. So you the virus and the ecosystem, the virus and the host. And so uh, since evolution took place in, in Earth, um, came to us as a species. So viruses accompanied us all, all the time. Um, by the time even that we carry viral genome in our own genetic system, so that you can see, as you can see here. So most of the time there were retroviruses that had the possibility to integrate in the in the genome. And, but in the course of evolution, also the host arranged this, um, this um, genetic material, and that's a... a how um, part of our genome, you know, 10, 15%, I, I, I don't know. This is also 
by the viruses. So this is a, as you see, a huge, a complex, um, and a world that we still have a lot to think about it, and that's why it is so important to to study them. You know, uh, pretty much you may have other other uh, examples of of how the virus drives also the evolution. So in one time, virus drive its evolution and in the relation with the host, they also drive the evolution of the host. And that's why this is uh, so important uh, nowadays to, to study. Then, um, so how old are they? You know, how, how old do we know? Or we think we know, because unfortunately we don't have fossil records of viruses as as other people that work in other parts of virology, they they might have. But we know, see, for instance, here in this is uh, Egyptian king, you know, it has this characteristic flaccid leg of polioviruses. Polio was a very important uh, disease worldwide, even when I when I was a child, uh, we were the first to get vaccinated against against polio in 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 the Americas, and that's uh, they create really a, a paralytic uh, disease that is so important. Uh, fortunately, uh, by this time there is no polio. There is no polio as a, as a disease in the, in the Americas. But that took a time to to achieve, you know. So you have Iruela, so this is a Japanese manuscript, and also you may know or may have noticed how also the the disease um the, they shape the history of Europe by, by, by that time and also in the conquer of the America when people uh, get in relation with other populations that uh, that uh, overcome the disease uh, before. There was a great mortality. Unfortunately, one of the viruses that, that are completely eradicated uh, nowadays. So as you can see, there is an also for you to have one of the the most uh, classical, famous uh, Uruguayan painter, Juan Manuel Blanes, has a, a beautiful painting, uh, which is um, is an, uh, an uh, which is called uh, an episode of Yellow Fever in Buenos Aires. It was on the River Plate, uh, you know, at um, an outbreak of this terrible disease transmitted by mosquito. This is a uh, a uh, family of Italian immigrants that maybe our families came from. And so you see that the question is all the history of humankind and even to our days, as you see with the uh, COVID-19 COVID pandemic. So viruses shape um, the evolution of itself and evolution of the host in that in that relation. So they, are they alive? So that is a question that everybody asks me, you know? So are viruses are alive? And this is a big discussion in, in the field. And I think that the, the right answer will be that, okay, it's an organism, but you can see there are two phases. You know, when you have a particle, viral particle, this is completely in an inert form, okay? But when virus interact with a cellular receptor, and so this cellular uh, uh, comes into the cell, the virus is alive, okay? The virus uh, hijack all the machinery of, of the cell to, to make their own proteins, as, as we will see. And so this is pretty much how we see viruses nowadays, but of course you will have uh, different colors with different with different ideas. So at the end, what is a virus? You know, so virus is a, um, an infectious agent, is an obligate intracellular parasite, which mostly caught of genetic material, 
So it can be DNA or RNA and a protein called, and sometimes it depends on the kind of virus, a membrane that the virus ha gets when they exit the cell. And uh, so uh, this is pretty much an, um, an obligate intracellular parasite. That's, that's, that's why we can have a, a definition of what virus is or, or how we we should see it, you know, in the in the course of evolution. And so why why they worry nowadays, as I told you, because uh viruses can infect pretty much all forms of uh of life. And so and they also um they uh, are related to important diseases, uh, not only of the human beings, but of the animals and the plants. And so this this concept uh, from the WHO, which is very important, there is one health. So our health and the health of our uh, uh, us as a species uh, will be related to uh, to really get in, in our mind that it's only one health. So you will have in in one side, for instance, uh, imagine diseases that affect animal species. Some are very important, like for instance, from, from cow foot and mouth disease virus. It's a um, picorna virus. Picorna pico is a, it's a small RNA virus, but they give you a very headache, big headache and other uh, viruses that that, that are uh, important. They have um, from the swine. Swine is also very important in, for instance, in, uh, influenza virus as a mix in Wilson and created new strains of, of, of viruses. There are encephalitis of, of the horses that are really big problem. Uh, so the from the dog or whatever the poultry now we have a very big problem with, for instance, the uh, uh, viruses that have the the poultry that influenza H five N one high pathogenic. Also, I tell you that here in South America, this was extended, for instance, to to marine mammals and make a terrible disaster with tons of death. Uh, unfortunately, so you have viruses affecting pretty much all the species um, that have an interest for them, maybe the betting, maybe for production. But also sometimes I would say the, uh, but it also uh, for culture, agronomic. So you have many different viruses that affect the our production. Some of them are very old, like uh, to micro uh, mosaic uh, virus, but you have from tomatoes, from papaya, from whatever, uh, you have also viruses in infecting uh, vegetables, and that's really uh, a very also in some region of the world that's a complete uh, disaster for bringing food uh, to the people. And of course, you can see here. On the right, this is how the 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 viruses uh, can have can uh, have uh, a lot of uh, give us a lot of problems on on many many different diseases. Causes five very different type of viruses. Some are the RNA viruses. Some are DNA viruses. And also expect surprises because in, in biology, I will say that everything can happen, okay? So be aware of uh, not have a just a straight thinking and you had many things that you had to 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 understand. So from the, you can see here from the land, I will not see you, you for sure know SARS-CoV-2 pandemic and also some very important diseases in pediatrics, like respiratory syncytial virus with children uh, low than two years old, and that gives you 
a lot of a lot of problems from uh now we have a what the WHO calls mpox and sometimes like monkeypox and, and many many different diseases and so as you can see all this if you're thinking in in an, in an evolutionary form that like our uh, our species had passed it through there will be many um so it shape also the way you know like bottlenecks in the in the population that because there were no vaccines before of any of these virus is how this can can go uh and so on but uh, not all viruses are bad in in an, in an anthropological point of view. So there is no good and bad in in biology. I say that affect us as a population in health, in production of the even the one health uh, concept. So the evolution is is really amazing. The evolution of the viruses, uh, the evolution in in general, uh, 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 as you for sure know better than me. But for instance, there are very good examples. So there are, a, this is a poly DNA virus that this what uh, insect in the in the larva of, of the insect um, with the with the eggs. And so what the evolution has told this um, this poly DNA virus, this suppress a kind of immune response. Of, of of the of the larva, so so the the egg can be in a very good shape and um and development. So this is imagine the complexity of the task. So so it gives you an example of how virus it affects. And this is um in the middle you will see this is really great because it's a co-infection by a fungus, you know, and the uh, uh, and a virus that this co-infection gives the this um this this plant that, that is here uh, more thermal tolerance you know to the to the heat you know by 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 the sun and so this is really amazing if you make a control the plant will be pretty much uh, not in a good shape and when you have this co-infection it can gives you another trait. And that's really uh, amazing um, how this uh, uh, evolved, you know, and give rise to this 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 uh, this very interesting trait. And on the right is what I I know the the most. There was this is a very very nice pictures, you know, from the 17th century, you know, on tulips. Uh, tulips, by, by that time, it was like gold. There was things that were culturally by the king, so they don't have a high status in society. And of course, there are different viruses that infect tulips. You know, that what I want that, that destroy them. But the, so it has this kind of, uh, this is a flamigerous um, tulip, where they may well say some kind of uh, you know, like lines of fire that, that um, and so they were, uh, they realized they were different kind and, and that was very, so what people in the high society wants, wants to have it, this is an effect caused by an infection of a particular, of a particular virus in the plant. So you will see you have a, a huge, you know, um, uh, amount of things you know coming you know going on in this in this in this world you know and so um now which is really interesting to say okay how how big they are you know so you have on the left uh families you know of um of viruses of, of different types and and you can see for instance if you Go, let's say here, for instance, on hepatitis, well, hepatitis A or poliovirus that are from the same family, you know, that are uh, very small, 30 nanometers of, of uh, this is a, a virus that, uh, it's a naked virus, and so it has no uh, envelope, and then uh, 
for example, they, although it is very small, it causes a very, very important liver, liver disease. And um, we studied that several years at, at our lab. And although it is so small, it can have so many, many problems. And then you, you know, or you can have Ebola virus, which is causing a uh, really, this is one bigger that is causing a uh, Filoviruses cause a uh, hemorrhagic fever, which is nowadays, even today, you know, in this Central Africa region, particularly in, in the Congo, uh, it's cause a terrible outbreaks of oh, this is a uh, hemorrhagic fever. Now, that I will say some words when when discuss uh, uh, evolution, and this is a terrible, terrible disease. But then you see they have many different or different kind of uh, icosahedrical, pretty much capsids, or they have, uh, excuse me, icosahedrical like this, and they have helical, or, or this is pretty much the two big symmetries of the virus. But nowadays, you know what, what we have? We thought on virus were small. But now, very recent, so they, they've first discovered this is a mimi virus, so if you compare with a bacteria, um, which is a, for for us, you, you can see that maybe for you, 400 nanometers will be pretty small, but for other working variables, that will be pretty, pretty big, you know? And now we have them, them, this virus, like Pandora virus, that is pretty much the size of a bacteria. I think that we missed it before, because they were so big that when you look at the um, optical microscope, uh, so we say, no, no, this is a bacteria, cannot be a virus. Virus, can, you have to do the electronic um, uh, microscope. But at the end, you know, they have a pretty pretty big size with very complex uh, structure. This is a DNA, DNA, DNA viruses. And so, uh expect more surprises so what is this and uh, for sure for young people you know what is going on how virus how this virus uh evolved to have uh, this uh huge structure you know and i think uh nowadays we we are still uh having having viruses you see for instance compare whether it is a parvo virus which uh a Pandora virus, which is uh, something really uh, complete different uh, size and uh, for sure a complete different way that we had to to think about this this kind of virus. So we see this is a big world, and so it is important to understand any of this. And every of this has its particularity, and in 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 virology anything can happen you know so so the question is uh, uh how we put an order in, in, in all this uh, in all this uh, world in all the thing you know so because viruses uh uses all no genetic mechanisms that you already know for molecular biology are used by viruses maybe there are some others that we don't know that maybe uh in the future will be uh, will be discovered because when I was young, well, you know, well, you were told that, you know, RNA goes to RNA, to DNA, DNA goes to protein. And that was written in gold, you know, in the front of, of, of the building of the school, okay? But now, uh, years later, you know, uh, retroviruses, let's go, uh you know and on the on the other way and so you had a reverse transcriptase okay and you have integrates and you have anything so you had to expect uh surprises in 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 virology and so um they have also you had to expect uh surprises in the world they interact with uh with host, for instance, if we, um, uh, Dr. Roos at the beginning of, of the 20th century, when when 
when they were studying sarcoma, you know, it's kind of cancer of chickens, you know, and they proposed they cause cancer. They, they, you know, they throw it even the stones, you know, to him. Then later, okay, like 50 years later, they got the Nobel Prize because this type of virus cause cancer in chickens, you know? So things coming not so straight, and uh, maybe we think at, at the first sight. And so how we put an order in all this world? Well, I think Professor Baltimore, a uh, Nobel Prize, they plus a, a classification, which is it's a, the most accurate. In the past, we were relying most on the shape of the viruses, the size of the viruses that we take also into, into consideration on many other physical aspects, but he came with a classification that permits to put an order in all the world. Um, you can see this is a very standard way to, to do it, and you will have a very clear explanation on that. And so what, what it is is that the mRNA is the center. So this is what you have to understand, because uh, all viruses it depends on the, on the nature of the genome that they have. They will have to make a messenger RNA. A messenger RNA, or sometimes you will have in the article positive strand. Positive strand RNA is the messenger, uh, is the polarity of the messenger RNA. Okay, so if a kind from P. coronaviruses, which is, uh, you, you will see here, so for instance, this virus has a single stranded, so only one strand of RNA of positive polarity, which is means it has the genome in its mRNA. When the coronavirus is infected the cell, this mRNA in the cytoplasm will will make you know uh, for uh, but other way that uh, so translate into proteins and so uh, so they will give you the viral proteins that that you need. But for instance, if we go to this here, ortomyxovirus, which is a very complicated word to say pretty much influenza virus that you know, but this is our uh, segmented, this is a segmented virus. So it is not only one strand, there are eight uh, strands, you know, it, or anyone uh, a call for, for a different protein in, in, uh, in, the, in the virus. So, uh, this, but this is our negative sense, okay? Negative sense RNA. So if you are negative in some way, you have to go to positive uh, to some way. So this is the mechanism. So there are mechanisms by the polymerases and, um, to make uh, so complicated. This is for another class. Uh, to pass to pass this uh negative strand to positive strand. Okay, and so you have uh at the end uh you have to pass through this form. Oh, sorry about that. Um, to this form and to make your mRNA. Okay. And so this is how all the all these families are done. There are viruses that are um for instance positive uh, RNA. Let me let me see. Um you have for instance uh okay retroviruses, for instance, they have two copies uh in the capsid. Why two, you tell me? But there are instead of one, there are two, and these uh, two copies are uh, um, positive sense. But this this uh, virus uh, integrates uh, in the genome of, of the cell. So we have to go to the nucleus and and integrate as a DNA form. That's what unfortunately called diseases like. Uh, uh, human immunodeficiency virus, for instance, and, uh, and all that. So you had to pass through some way to get integrated 
in the in the DNA. So there are many, but when you need to to multiply, so that's a then at the end you will have to do uh to synthesize some mRNA. So this is the key of the thing. And then if you study any kind of virus, but this uh, classification, you you will you will see, you know, you have a you have a scheme, you have a way that you know that there are things that I that it can happen. So one thing is uh, the genetic material that is in the capsule. Other thing is how the virus get a strategy to infect the cells, multiply, and generate a new new particles. So if you know the viral genome, you know the basics. You know that's why it's important to study. You know the 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 genome of, of the virus. You know they have, of course, that is not just a uh, strand or RNA or DNA. There are signals there. You need other proteins. Sometimes of the same virus. Sometimes from the host that had to join there, etc. So, uh, there are a lot of study there. But if you know, but the first thing is if you know. Your viral genome, you know, you know the basic of, of, of the stuff, okay? And so, but don't think that just knowing the genome, you know the whole the whole picture. Okay. So uh the viruses sometimes they have to carry their own thing, you know. For instance, the um so they 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 don't carry just the, the RNA strand like here it's, it's an influenza virus okay you have the segment in here but they carry their own polymerases you know if not it's impossible for the the, the, the virus to depend on the uh, to the um, machinery of, of the cell to synthesize their proteins you know that's that's the thing is that the parasite needs the translation machinery of the cell, okay? And so they have, for instance, this is NEP, and this is a um, protein that, that, that permits you to, to export to, to, to the cytoplasm. This is a um, virus that goes to the nucleus of the cell. Uh, for instance, imagine immunodeficiency virus that you have, they, they also carry a uh, different factor, reverse transcriptase, integrase. This is a complex capsid. So uh, not only uh, uh, so this is really uh, what you need also to make a productive infection. So in one way to you need to know the genome of the virus but remember that that by that a mammalian cells don't have RNA dependent RNA polymerases. Okay, for example, I have an RNA that, like for instance, a polio virus, and and I um, or I have a whatever kind of virus I I will have virus need to go uh, RNA dependent RNA uh, polymerases um, that that they need. Sometimes they, they code it in their own genome, okay? And sometimes they, they do other things. But uh, remember that is for, from one side you need to to uh, to know the genome of, of the virus you would like to study, but remember that there are other things that may influence the way the way you see it, and that's what is important. And so, virus can can have uh, in the capsid other things, you know, like, like for instance, um, now it is very, very interesting, very near. This is a a Tupan virus, which, well, you know, the the only they they even call for tRNA and all things. So they the only the only thing that they don't have is the ribosome here. So 
So this is also a very important aspect of, of virology to try to understand how viruses uh, can give you uh, the whole picture or you know what is going on. Um, other aspect that, that will, I'm interested in try to, to show you is that sometimes people think that virus multiply in the way that, that cells or eukaryotic cells does, you know, pretty much as you see in the right. So, you know, uh, by being artificial, you will have all this uh, going on. And this is the way uh, in the case of eu eukaryotic cells, bacteria, but this is not uh, the way you had to think on virus uh, reproduction. So uh, virus don't use a binary fish on the cells, uh, but multiply in a different way. Um, so to put their genetic material, the progeny in capsid. So I will say that the difference between viruses and cells is that in, in virus, you first make the parts and then assemble the product, okay? So when you infect, for instance, a bottle of cells in culture, um, at the beginning of the future, there is a, a period where you don't see anything happen, okay? Why? Because we are making the parts. So we hijack the translation machinery of the cell and make the part. This part, you know, this is more complex that we see. You know what's going on in the cytoplasm, how do you migrate, how they, but you have to be transported to the membrane of the cell. So I think it has to be done in the right time, okay? And so here you don't see, and then you see a burst so when finally, uh, actually, you can see thousands and thousands of particles, maybe in a good infection in, in a cell that are coming out or, or the cells going to infect another one. And so this is a very important concept, you know, on how a uh, virus population works. And this is also has to be related on, on what is going on here, you know, and so and what in relation you have host and virus, host and virus, virus and host, and and all that and the strategy uh you may have to to do to do the stuff, you know. And so at the end, you know, how how we came to to have a concept of virus. You know, um, let me see that I was here. Let me see if I can. Okay. This is because uh, I want to show you the Chamberlain filter. So, the, so but then, um, well, you know, eight, 17, 28, pretty much around this this this, this time. Uh, virus was, was used as a concept. Uh, to describe an agent that causes an infectious disease. But, but I was not really clear what was that. We have very interesting names, you know, that, you know, viruses sometimes, you know, for to say that influenza came from, from, I will say, the Italian, I say, the influence of the seed when it was humid. But they were not really a uh, clear concept on uh, what the virus uh, maybe maybe it is, you know. But it was a um, there was a thing was really you know a notion. So virus was was intended. It was a Latin name uh, uh, for poison. When you know, um, but this is pretty much a um, a what it means, you know. And at the time, I thought there was there the, the was liquid. It was not a concept of, of virus until Louis Pasteur uh, became to to study that. Of course, there were people studying viruses uh, long before, but the, but you know, Chamberlain uh, was a fellow that was working for Pasteur in that 
that kind of filters that is a porcelain filter. So this really very, very tight filter, you know, the, uh, uh, but the time they were using the water, the quality of water was not the one that had many, unfortunately in the world we don't have good quality of water in general, uh, pretty much in third world countries, but the, the way you see to remove, you know, from, from, uh, from water, what it is, uh, what it was supposed, you know, to remove bacteria that were causing uh, diseases. So the first one, there was a kind of, you know, uh, I was Ivanovsky pretty much in, in Russia. There was the first one, uh, was a, here you had the tobacco, what well, the tobacco industry, it was and it still is an uh, important, important industry. Uh, there was uh, this leaf were infected. Now, now we know that this is tobacco uh, disease virus. So what they do it, and also then pretty much uh, here you have in Latin, which is a fluidum, you know, I, I said like a life, a fluid that is contagious, or, or you know. Um, what they did, they pass it through the filter or Chamberlain filter, porcelain filter, and so the bacterial cannot pass that. Okay? And so then they say, well, you know, this is are of course smaller than than bacteria. So when when Pasteur was working on rabbit, which is a very beautiful work, uh pass it through the, the you know, first uh, he thought it was a small bacteria. No, no, there were no passing bad. And so at the end, you know what they what they found, uh, you know, by the time of, of Pasteur, Chamberlain, uh, and uh, and all that, is that the 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 thing was okay, it was small than bacteria, but you know what? They the for example, if it was a small bacteria, one experiment, yeah, you can think, okay, I keep the result, you know, I filter the thing, pass it through the filter, and this is a small thing, I put it in media. If there are bacteria, they will grow. But you know, they know that it's not growing. So it has to be other thing, it cannot be bacteria. And so they only uh, grow of a span, if you put it in the host, so, okay, you can scratch leaves, you know, with the results of the filter here and scratch a new, um, a new leaf, and then you will have an infection by to tobacco disease virus, you know? And so there was an evolving concept of, of virus that we had today. Then we have the first uh, animal viral, which is foot and mouth. This is a very, very, very important uh, disease in, in cattle. In the, they can destroy the cattle industry. This is particularly important in South America, uh, but not only in South America, but for us, that our industry, cattle industry is pretty big. And so this is how we, at the end, um, at the end, we came to the concept to the concept of virus, you know, how we know how we know it today. That will rely on, like in uh, like in the first decades of the twentieth century. Uh, so when the first uh, electron microscopy was done, you know, but. but Ruska et al. Imagine this is a very old stuff, you know. And then here you see uh, some uh, bacteriophage, and so they say, "Hey, this is not any fluid, any any liquid, you know. This is an entity." And so, like by uh, 1939, you will have the first electron microscopies, and then to really prove that there was a completely different entity as we know our uh, viruses that time. But well, so how we go to here to today? Well, you in this course, you know, uh, uh, Sergio Patano, he, he's very nice team for sure. You will learn 
thing that you know more, more than me about it. But now we have X-ray crystallography structures and, and models that we have. This is a, a polyoviruses with a different proteins in uh, in color. This is a icosahedric capsid, usually, you know, made by few uh, a protein. You have BP1, BP2, BP3 in the surface. There is another one behind that is BP4, which is, is important for the interaction with the with the receptor cell. Uh, and so even you you now know where this this atom uh, is, and uh, for sure you will learn a lot of things on how to how this gives you. Um, really a, a wonderful information on, on how things are, are are going on you know in, in, in this in this in this moment so we are continue to to learn you know and that's why also biology is a very integrative um integrative uh, science you know as, as as we learn today you know and well, so at the end, we came to the world of viruses and uh, you make an uh, overview of how viruses uh, are in this, in, this, in this world and how we classify. And it, that will give you a family, pretty much here you have all the things. This is a, a line, we use the lineal system like, like we use in animal plants from, from, from Linnaeus time. Um, Okay, we show that the, the Baltimore classification, what I will say, this is the main thing that put an order on on all this. And so in the lineal, for instance, uh, and you, you, you will see, for instance, the uh, coronaviruses. So there were a family. Okay, this is um, the way you, you can classify. For instance, SARS-CoV-2 that, that you can see here. So from the family coronaviridae, so because we know other coronaviruses like MERS that are in the Middle East and, and SARS-CoV-1, SARS we'll say. And so the, the family is classified in different genomes. Uh, SARS-CoV-2 belongs to the beta coronavirus. There are uh, coronaviruses, perfect mammals. And, yeah, and then you have the species of of the virus, so we we classify uh, viruses in the lineal way. So pretty much, I will say that this is a, a main thing, main main order. There are the symmetry of the capsid. Also, you you have an helicoidal. You see here, it says uh, this is viral, another virus. You have an helicoidal, a nucleic acid, weak coats. You know, surrounded by a, by a Simple code, you have the uh, the icosahedral, icosahedric form that you have seen in uh, electron microscopy. There can be polio, hepatitis A, many, many others. Um, and so uh, you will have, um, so this is a pretty much, the, there are some other uh, co complex uh, morphology, but I will say that these two, uh, symmetries are the the the, the most uh, abundant ones that we have in this world of viruses, and so the presence of acid lipid membrane. So you have classified envelope and unenveloped viruses. Uh, for instance, uh, that's the uh, as you can see here. This is an important also classification because this gives you also an idea on how the virus assemble the the parts and, and how they constitute the the capsid so the difference is that um so the the envelope viruses have an envelope that virus uh, acquire when it goes um uh, forming the new particles, for instance, in the in the cell, that, that is also coming from the cell, the membrane. So you have uh, viral proteins inserted in the cell membrane. Then pretty much these viruses have a, a matrix 
a protein that goes to these uh, domains that they have the the proteins inserted in the in the cell membrane and also have uh, all the 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 um, reliable nucleoproteins that it goes inside the capsule when it when it goes out to the cell so the virus acquire uh, a membrane that is from cellular uh, origin so it's from the host okay and so the uh, we also saw the size of the vita capsid that we'll see there are one of that are also called picorna virus so pico small RNA to the ones I told you that are this is brand new I I don't even think uh, about it you know all the all the sizes of the particles that we take in, into consideration it, if you want to know more about how the world of virus is and it is classified, you, you can have to the International Committee for Taxonomy of Viruses. There is a, we have a permanent commission of college um, trying to, to make an order and, and classify each time you have new species of virus and, and all that and give it a name, you can go there to to this address and so so far for the first introduction on how the viruses uh and do it we i thank you uh thank you all of you and sergio martin all these uh, other people that do this this wonderful courses at institute pastero montevideo um so i will try to to share with you uh, in another talk, um, so part of this course, so how, how virus is evolved, that's, uh, you know, okay, we now have this world, uh, how this world is evolving, and so uh, I, will, I will be more, more than pleased, and I thank you, and I hope this will uh, make you to be more near to other work of viruses, so thank you very much for for listening. Thank you very much. Okay.